Hello everyone. Some killer gameplay from Dead by Daylight here. I'm using the Hellbilly and I'm using the Generator Defense perk build again. But when I spawned on this map and I seen Iron Works of Misery, I didn't have no offering or anything. I said, uh, I'm not doing Generator Defense in this map here. I'm not even. Everything, all the gens look all really spread out here, and I, I just. I really didn't realize that I had three gens really close by. So I opted that they just go back to the plane normally and just patrol all gens and try and find survivors and tr just try and get as many hooks as I can and just rank up the, the original way. But it was really these survivors that, that made this uh, generator defense video. And I'm glad that they did that because I've the same day that I've uploaded this, I've uploaded a a survivor gameplay where me playing the suffocation pit and explaining the vital tips and what gens they do and what gens they leave. Uh, there's one of the survivors had taken out all all three gens and and one end of the map and they really cut off half half the map and they, they boxed us in and and then we all died and this is kind of the same the same thing they took out all the fire gens they, they really made the map so small and now it was so easy to patrol all gens and if you're playing survivor well if you you spawn in the trial and someone sp spawns in beside you well I would take out a corner gen then because it's co-op it's faster and it's more points but if you spawn in your own well you want to try and get under the middle of the map and take out one of those dangerous gens those break those links give the killer as much distance to cover as possible it really give your team the best chance and if someone's getting chased by the killer well that's your time get on get on those gens and if the killer camps you or tunnels you or, or kills you first and you really don't see the benefit well Spectate the game, and if you've taken out one or two of those metal gens and died, spectate the game. I, I'll bet you that that you'll see most of your teammates will escape that trial because of you taking those gens out. Well, these guys here, they they taken out all the the gens in the distance, and I don't know how I didn't see these three gens here. That gen there where Meg's running to, the one to my left, and then there's one to my right. They're really close together, and. I think it was 10-15 minutes into this game before I realised that here I've got three gens here close together I can do generator defence here really easily I'm going to double pop this game you really need generator defence to double pop and to double pop these days you, you're really going to have to max out all the emblems you're really going to need a long game you're going to have to max out your Devious, which is your chainsaw, and you're going to have to max out your brutality, which is your your hit with the hammer. And you're really going to need to max out your destruction there by kicking gens and breaking pallets. And then you're going to have to max out your chaser, which is finding and the finding more survivors. And the quickest way of maxing the chaser up is really is just if you're doing generator defense, well, you can just chase one guy for a little bit and if he's taking you too far from your gens you'll ch just go back and kick your gen again and then tr you'll find someone new again but here I'm telling you it must be 10-15 minutes before I actually realize if I'm doing generator defense there's no way I'm I'm leaving the my three gens like the way I have here and chasing this guy all around this building upstairs and all. Because in generator defense, if two other people's doing co op in one of those gens, even that little run that that guy done there, that's enough time for them to knock out one of those gens. If you're doing generator defense, you really have to prioritize your gens. Not to always chase people across the map. Ah! 
I was so glad that these survivors left those three gens. Because it really backs up the, the video in the survivor gameplay and the suffocation pit. I guess that's why they call that map the suffocation pit. It's because if you take out all gens on one end of the map, well, you're back then and, and you can't breathe because the killer's checking gen to gen and it's, it's just gets really tough for the survivors. I don't know why I'm trying to take this guy to the basement. There's no way that I'm going to make it all the way to the a hook with this guy. I just was waiting for him to escape. And this is the chance here that I end up defending this one. The one in front of me here. Now look how close that gen is. I really don't know. I, I, even at this point in the game, I still haven't sunk in that this map's good for generator defense. The slayout's good. Well, not always this map's always going to be good, but the, the, in this game, the slayout was great. And that gen there that I was charging towards there, that's the other gen. I really didn't pressure those gens at all. And the, those survivors just really, really left those gens. So I was really kind of lucky in uploading, uh, making this video of Generator Defense. It's a real great tip if you're a survivor. It's not always take out the, the corner gens. Because uh, sometime in this game when I've got one gen left, then it, the, the survivors are really, really kind of doing nothing because I'm always on them. And I'll say it again, if you're a survivor and if someone's getting chased, well you really want to get in and into the middle of the map and t take out those middle gens because those gens are really links for, for the killer to check one gen and then go to another one super quick. Whereas if you take those gens out, that killer has to travel d distance. And it, then it's just success for the survivors. Had these survivors taken one or two of these gens out, I really had no chance in this game. There's no way that I could, I could go to that gen in the distance and then go all the way back then to the far end. Just uh, If there's four people still living and there's two in that far gen and then there's two in the one the one at the far end of the, that building that they'd taken out earlier. I really have no chance of stopping those guys knocking out those gens. But they knocked out those gens and... And look, I'm still even checking this gen. If I was knew I was doing generator defense, I wouldn't even be checking this gen. I would be worried that someone would be putting good progress in these three chains. You see there, someone was on the gen in the distance there, and, and I'm chasing this guy upstairs and taking him down to the basement. Now, I, I wouldn't do that if I was doing generator defense. Not until I, I was sure how much progress was on all those three gens. Now, I really uh, hadn't a clue what, what was going on at this stage. And this is a gen I was talking about that I knew someone was working on. real bad situation for the survivors once this happens
And this is the point now where we're doing the last gen and I'm looking at the, the gen loot and I'm saying I can why didn't I see these three gens at the start of the game? I can defend these gens real easy. With the perk build I have that I'm really gonna double pop this game. I was so lucky. I w had good success with my generator defense that season that I've recorded these videos I just run this perk build and there was lots of maps where where I was able to defend three gens really easily and there's a good few maps where you, it really doesn't work as well but but you were still able to maybe pop or save game but if you get three gens this close here and uh, if you're the hell bully, you can cover so much ground with a chainsaw and he's so vital to doing this strategy there's no reason why you can't double pop every game when the when the gens are this close now the, these survivors they're, they're not doing very little because I'm sure every time that they plan to touch a gen that uh, I seem to come and check. Ah! That guy hiding behind the, the tree there, he, he was probably waiting to I go and then go back on the gen. And you, you really just, they can't get any room to breathe, it's just it's so tough for them. That's why that's why the hellbilly is key there. Yeah, that chainsaw sprint. If you know someone's doing your chance, well, you can just rush in there super quick, and maybe even down them with a one shot with the chainsaw. There's no other killer that can do this strategy better. And double puppets really hard these days. You really need a long game. And you really need to max out all the emblems. And you really need to hook people three times. But if you're playing generator defense, well you don't you don't want to be hook camping or tunneling. You really want pe people to get rescued from the hook. So you want to clear the hook and, and let them get rescued. Because if I if you're never there and they're on the hook, well, the survivors catch that on. That they they start to they realize that we're not getting camped here. We're we're getting allowed to get healed. We're allowed to get rescued. Everybody struggles right on, and you'll always get the three hooks. Double pup these days. If, if one or two of the survivors like, kill themselves in the first hook, well, you can forget double pupman. Just end the game as quick as you can. But if survivors know that they're not getting camped or tunneled and they're allowed to get healed after you, they get rescued, and they're going to struggle on, and you'll get the three hooks. You see that guy there with a the flashlight there I was trying to save? I don't know, I'm the same too when I'm survivor. Really useless at using the flashlight. I don't know, I think you need to be a lot closer. Ah, every survivor character that I have in this game. I've got loads of great flashlights. I've got loads of those great uh, uh, power bulb add-ons and... I just can't use them. I don't think there's ever one time in this game where I've ever saved somebody with a flashlight save. Really hard thing to do. I think the, the guys that's good at it really... And they really follow the killer about and they're really close by. And I think you really need to be close by. And 
a lot of killers use this Franklin's demise because they don't like that but I would never bother with Franklin's I always wear headphones when I play games headphones is great for playing games doesn't matter what game you are you can hear people's footsteps you can it's just it gives you so much an advantage I never run Franklin's because I've got the headphones many times I've down someone and I can hear footsteps behind me and I've seen that they've brought flashlights so I, I know it's that guy with a flashlight ready to save you really can get yourself another down or another kill there and the, that nurse perk uh, I think it's called Strider it makes the breathing of the survivors 50% louder well, if you have headphones, you probably wouldn't even need that perk. I can hear people breathing and everything with, with the headphones. I'd imagine if you did run that perk with the headphones, so how good it would be then. If you're a survivor and you don't have bond, well, you can always hear people creeping about and just the headphones is such a great thing. Really, really good for the, the footsteps. I mean, when it comes to you know, people trying to flashlight safe. You see now I'm having a field day with these survivors here. It was a real huge mistake from them. Really taking out all the easier gens. And this is a huge map but look how small it is now. I never leave the vicinity of this building too far. And the rest of the map's just completely useless really and that's the Dwight that I was looking for I let that other Dwight go I really want to double pop and I really want to max out my emblems so I didn't kill that other Dwight so I'm giving them a chance and Hopefully he can save that Lord Dwight before he goes into the second phase of the struggle. And with generator defense, you always want to prioritize your gens. Never chase people too far. And never hook camp or tunnel. You really need that long game for the double pup. I always urge all I would always urge all killers that if they're in so much control in the game where there's loads of gens to do and nobody's really doing nothing that he's applying so much pressure well that, that's that's the time that killer should really push for the double pup max out all his emblems all his devious chaser brutality and destruction by destroying and keeping pellets and if the gens get down to like I one or two gens, I wouldn't even panic then. If, unless the gens are really pumping and ready to, to get popped, well, he, all he has to do then is, is kill, kill one of the persons that was on death hook, or two of them, and th that's your best way of double popping these days. just takes so much time to max out those emblems that's really survivor friendly double popping for killers these days back in the old days when the killer just killed four people and he double pop popped automatically well it doesn't work like that anymore now for a, a killer to double pop well it's really survivor friendly because all the survivors are, they're going to get great points because the game's going to go on so long 
They're going to get hook rescues. They're going to get uh, altruism for healing and hook rescuing. And they're, they're going to get light bringing because they've touched so many gens. And they're all going to get boldness because you've, you've spotted them and chased them and then let them go because you're prioritizing your gens. Everybody's boldness is going up. And they, most of them may even double pop themselves because if they've got like self care which comes under survival well they, they can really they can really double pop themselves it's really killer friendly now for or survivor friendly for a killer to double pop these days really makes a game of it I know some people will say that's yeah, too long of a game but it's really up to these survivors to get these gens done and it's really tough with my part build and that chainsaw I'm just I'm in there as soon as that gen popped I'm I'm right there on it and it's banged again that's 15% that I regressed that just in that sequence there Really tough for these guys. Real great hard build and real real good great uh, strategy. Even the be uh, this this uh, perk building strategy, providing the maps right and the layouts got free close gens. It would really put a lot of gen rushers in place. I w when I play survivor, I would class myself as a a gen rushing survivor. Because I always run bond and I'm always teaming up with teammates and I'm doing gens co-op. But I've been in situations where, where the killer wasn't even doing gen defense or he didn't have distressing or unnerving presence. But he was in a tight situation, he was under pressure. He, the, it was down to the last gen and they were close by and and the two gens were really pumping and, and he really wasn't concerned about chasing people too far away across the map he would chase you a little bit land a hat and then he, he would come go straight back to his gen again and that, that really was it's really great points for everybody getting the escape and getting healed and But that's the most vital tip in the, this game, Survivor, is always try and take out the middle gens. And always leave corner gens, one or two corner gens. Try and leave the most distance. And the killer really has no chance if, if there's distance between gens. Every, every map has got two gens real close by. Every map and I would always try and take out one of those gens you see now I have all my emblems ranked up and I'm just looking for this last survivor I'm looking to kill all survivors in this game. I really don't need the. I really think I've double popped already. Is. That's why I'm sort of searching a bit further now. I know they're not doing gems. So they know now that they're not going to get one of those gems completed.
see that person there was looked me a few times on the pallet there. Really glad that they do this strategy because they really don't even want to go near pallets or chase anybody at all. And Jens is my priority. And Had I been doing this at the start of the game, chasing after someone? Well, the two other people's on one of those dangerous gens, taking it out, and I'm really in trouble then. With a strategy. You don't even have to worry about that. Once it gets down to, to the last gen, and the three gens are so close together, well... You just keep slugging people and putting them down because that's another good tactic in gen defense. If you can put people down, well, one of the teammates has to come to their aid and heal them and it, ta it takes so much time and it really slows down the generator progress. So it always pays to always land a hit on every survivor you see and don't always have to chase them to down them and hook them. Go back to your gen then again, that's the best farm uh, it's the best tactic in the in this strategy and I really wasn't worried about that guy getting out the hatch and I knew it double popped anyway and you look at the survivor scores there really great scoring game for everyone but anyway thanks for watching